Oh, much better. Oh, hi, Whitney. Hi, Glenn. It's good to see you all. I'm very happy to be here. It's cloudy here in Acton today. I hope you're all doing well and you're all taking care of yourself. Yeah, the weather here is pretty nice also. Nice and sunny. All right, well, it's five after, so I think we can, uh, I think we can get started. So it looks like we have some new people joining us. Glad everyone could make it. I think you all know why we're here. The Sloan students have had yet another COVID outbreak. I don't really know why they need to socialize outside of class when they have all their role-playing games, but here we are. So we have to find some way to stop this from happening again. That sounds great, Glenn. At Amazon, we had a great method for running meetings. Let's just take 10 minutes to read the Sloan email silently, and we can ask our questions on the Google Doc. I have a question. I'm sorry, who's that? It's me. Me? I believe the it's me is Drew, um, for those who weren't aware. All right, so what was your question, Drew? Could you give me a 90% confidence interval? How long is this meeting going to take? That is a fantastic question, Drew. Thank you so much for asking that. I'll play it safe and say somewhere between zero and maybe 10 million minutes. All right, does anyone have any suggestions for how we can deal with this COVID outbreak? Well, to start, we really need some way to determine what students can come to in-person classes since we have a limited number of seats. You know, I actually have a matching algorithm in mind. It's basically deferred acceptance, but... Sorry, why is it a two-sided market? Well, obviously the students care about what seats they get, and naturally the seats also have their own rankings over students. This way we can ensure that each chair gets its ideal student allocated to it. Oh, Ben, Ben, uh, you're on mute. Sorry, sorry. What I was going to say is, why don't we just run a large-scale RCT and randomize students to their chairs? We can even pilot the experiment in a developing department first. Good idea, Ben. I think they would let us do it at Harvard. Also, considering students' self-control problems, they might not actually come into in-person classes at all. We all know that beds are a powerful temptation good for grad students. On the subject of in-person classes, as some of you might know, I have a Twitter account, and I've been getting into some debates about this optimal seating policy during COVID question. There are these MIT media tech people who call themselves MMT folk, who keep saying that we can use MIT's 3D printer services to print our way out of this crisis. They say, just keep printing replica classrooms, 3D print more chairs, 3D print more tables, 3D print a new instructor. As long as R, the marginal cost of a 3D printer is less than G, the growth rate of COVID cases, they say, it'll be no problem. But you know what I say? If we keep 3D printing classes, eventually the value of an MIT graduate class will be nothing. And I personally refuse to step into the 3D printing machine. No way they can clone this hair. Sorry, Avon, I think you, I think you cut out in the middle there. Can you repeat that? Oh, that's okay. Just check my Twitter. If we're having students in in-person classes, I'm worried about COVID spreading in the hallways. There's a particularly narrow corridor in E52 I'm concerned about. I'm sorry, I have a question. Are we going to have to relocate the faculty offices to make room for students? If so, we'll have to rerun the coffee machine placement mechanism again, and we know how much that cost last time. Or we could just use the budget balanced mechanism I suggested. Well, if so many of you weren't naive beta deltas, then that might actually work. Okay, why don't we table this coffee issue for a while? The next item on our agenda is preventing student meetups. Does anyone have any thoughts? Anyone? Anyone? 
I think oh, sorry, sorry. 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 they will be forced to steal students from a different group. And if the network is too interlocked, this could cause all the problems at group to liquidate forcing all students to drop out of the PhD. Well, now that you mentioned students dropping out of the PhD, we have been looking for full-time players for Jerry's kids. Okay, so it makes sense to go ahead with Nancy's policy and break up the PSA groups. I can help with enforcement of this policy. Because through a private sector contract, I have access to cell phone data, tracking the location of every person in the United States in real time, including the members of our first year cohort. So if too many students are meeting to work on the micro piece set, I will know. So does that mean you'll know whenever I go to buy my apple cinnamon Cheerios or my yogurt or get my concrete? Don't worry about it. Good idea, David. But the problem isn't that the problem set groups are too big. We just need to assign problem sets that are so long. The students will have no choice but to stay at home to work on them. All right, so the last item on the agenda is to talk about mask wearing. I think Anna has sent in a pre-recorded video, so I guess we'll start with that. This past year has been very difficult for members of the economics department. We find ourselves dropped into a highly nonlinear parameter space, plagued by unforeseen discontinuities. And it can be so difficult to know where we're heading, asymptotically. Indeed, as we navigate life's local maxima and minima, there is only one thing keeping our estimates stable. community. As we ease back into in-person classes, and Kendall Square is once again animated with clusters of roaming masked members of the economics department, we find ourselves running up against the classic problem of whether someone is intentionally waving at you, or they're like mistaking you for a different medium-sized person in a crewneck sweater, because, I mean, I wouldn't blame them, we all look the same with a mask on. For this extremely specific use case, the department has collaborated with the MIT Co-op to introduce a new and innovative product. MIT Economics Department Masks for weak identification. Indeed, in the eyes of us faculty, most first years are little more than tiny rectangles floating adrift on the internet. Our priors on their appearance are incredibly loose, causing grave confusion as to whether we might be deeply offending someone who's waving at me at Kava? Like, I don't know. Is it a first year? Is it the student I'm currently advising on the market? Is it one of the 12 Davids? Ooh, should I just say, hi David, and then cross my fingers? I don't know. I mean, I, like, I think I know them, maybe? What do you want from us, man? I mean, Claire Balboni got here last year. Like, you can't expect me to just know what the top of everyone's forehead looks like. MIT Economics Department masks. You might not know who you're waving at, but with high posterior probability, you know that you should probably both be acknowledging each other. Who knows? You might even make a first year's day. Just real quick, speaking of masks, does anyone have any ideas about how we can use relative import exposure to measure the effectiveness of different masks? All right, let's just let's just use my class dojo to see um, if if anybody has any thoughts. It's a little bit of a hard question. Uh, all right, Esther, Esther. Okay, Esther's not here. Frank? Um, is it? Uh, no, I don't know. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. We're moving on. Uh, Ivan? Uh, I don't know. Okay, okay, that's fine. Drew? I, I don't know. 
Okay, 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 okay. Let's just one more, one more. Whitney? I, I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll just, that's a, it's a hard question. So it's a good thing I asked. Now we can talk about it. David, um, as much as we'd love to hear on and on and have you talk us to sleep about import exposure, um, I'd like to take this conversation now from the descriptive to the normative. See, the problem with encouraging mask wearing is moral hazard, and as we all should know by now, um, we as a department, like the government, have no advantage in addressing moral hazard, unlike with adverse selection. Just go back to EFC 2010 figure one. The marginal cost curve would get shifted upwards for those attending in-person classes. Wait, Amy, I'm confused. Could you explain that again? Uh, it looks like we're out of time now, so I will let everyone work the details out in the privacy of your own Zoom room. All right, thanks everyone for your input. I'll get to work putting this plan into action as soon as possible. Bye. Well, the time for silent reading is up. Hello? Where's everyone? Oh no, I guess I missed the meeting. Well, all their ideas were probably just special cases of GMM anyway.